Good afternoon slash evening, everyone. As usual, I have a kitty. Um, today is actually the same day as the previous recording. As mentioned before, there wasn't really much there. I mean, I didn't even finish the first turn. So, uh, a couple things I neglected to mention that were in previous takes and not in the past take. Uh, one, there will not be any secret project movies. I love the movies, don't get me wrong, I would love to show them. There's two problems, though. One, they don't function properly when you have resolutions other than 1024 by 768. And two, they don't function properly at all on this computer. I think it's because of the way I'm recording it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so, uh, we get our first selection as to what technology to research. There's several good things to look for right in the beginning. The first one is to try to get Secrets of the Human Brain. Secrets of the Human Brain is a technology that gives you more technology. And the first, the first faction that researches Secrets of the Human Brain gets a free technology. Unfortunately, it has two prerequisites. Uh, it has biogenetics as a prerequisite. See, that's what the italics means down here. And it also has social psych as a prerequisite. Now, if I was one of the factions that um, actually had good research or started with one of these two, that might be feasible. For Yang, no. Um, there's a couple of others that are useful. If I was playing expansion stuff, um, Progenitor Psych is probably a pretty good one. Uh, alternately, it's good if I think I'm going to have a lot of C bases. I'm not going to need that immediately. Uh, lasers, um, applied physics is really nice if you happen to be next to someone. So you can go kill them. I don't think I'm next to anyone yet. Information networks is a generally good one to start with because network nodes are awesome. Uh, doctrine mobility is nice if you're in a whole bunch of land. That is to say that you need to cross long distances pretty quickly. Um, industrial base is nice because it's a prerequisite for other useful things. It's not really all that great. Uh, social psych is nice if you're playing on transheim because you're going to need to reduce drones pretty quickly. Uh, I, on the other hand, am going to have police, so it's not as big of a deal for me. And finally, biogenetics, or nearly finally, biogenetics is decent. Uh, recycling tanks are always useful. Uh, human genome projects is a great starting secret project. Uh, secret projects, for those of you that play Civ, they're wonders of the world. That's it. Um, however, we're going to go with Centauri Ecology. Uh, formers, former being short for terraformer, uh, formers are extremely powerful and really the secret behind anybody's success in SMAC. Ever. Not having formers is death. It is not actually possible to go anywhere without formers. And I like having them as early as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. Uh, let's see. Let's move our unit onto that fungus. Or try to and fail. You know, there's that too. Turn complete. Oh, oh, this allows us to finish our scout patrol. That's not actually something I needed. Oh well. Um, pods have a random effect when you loot them. Um, they're goody huts from Civ 4, or any of the Civs. Basically, they have random positive or negative effects. They might be infested with mindworms. They might be mineral resources. They might be enough resources to complete whatever your nearby city is completing. Unfortunately, I'm not really completing anything useful. Yeah, this was a pretty terrible thing to complete. Um, oh well. So, this red line that you see around the base, I have enabled what's called the base grid view. This red line is the are the squares that that base happens to consume. It's an easier way to do at a quick glance to see if I'm going to overlap anything with my new cities. I'm not intending to overlap anything ever, if possible. So, um, that's my first indigenous life form. This is a mindworm. Um, when you are playing Alpha Centauri, by the way, the first mindworm that you see, ever, you will always defeat. The game actually gives you a free battle against native life forms the first time. So, no matter what, when I do this, um, these are the odds. I have it popping up telling me what the odds are for any battle. There's technically a glitch when it comes to odds for native or for psionic combat in general. Usually, that's native life forms. Uh, the AI doesn't really ever use psi for anything else. Um, but it's not going to really matter for the beginning part. It'll start mattering when we get more reactors. Um, 
my odds are 21 to 7. It's really 100% I'm going to win. Whenever you defeat a unit, you have each unit has XP. Uh, in this case, my unit is now disciplined rather than just green. <clears throat> they have a bonus on attacks, bonus on defense. And I also get money. Um, for hatchling mindworms, that's 10 energy credits. And yes, I intentionally went in there with... I intentionally went in there to try to trigger some mindworms because I knew I could handle it. In this case, a robot power pod has set up some solar collectors in the area. This is kind of a crappy one, um, mostly because the solar collectors usually end up in spots I don't care about. But it does, however, remove fungus, so it's not bad. There's, a, there's bad ones, trust me. <clears throat> uh, let's see, I'm still scouting around. Ooh, that's a lot of fungus. So what I'm doing is I'm having units wait, so I do this in the order that I want them to do. See? Now you notice the odds are different now. Because, one, I'm disciplined rather than green, so I don't have a penalty here anymore. And, two, I'm a bit damaged. Um, units, by default, have ten hit points. It's actually ten times your reactor number. Uh, fission reactors are one, fusion are two, quantum's three, and singularity's four. Um, so I have nine hit points. I'm fighting against something that has ten hit points, but it's substantially weaker than me and it has a penalty. That's not an and. That's including the penalty. Anyway, um, it's substantially weaker than me. I'm the one attacking. When you attack with Psy on land, you have a Psy base rating of 3 versus a 2 from your opponent. And the only other thing that affects Psy is your um, either planet rating in the event that you're fighting native life forms or whether or your morale. Sorry, my brain is not functioning today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and attack it. I killed it. Killed dead. That's a lot of fungus. Well, damn it. Um, as you may notice, you don't necessarily have a high chance of um, walking into a fungus square. This is a reason why you probably want to avoid fungus when possible. Oh, that's quite convenient. I have a unity foil. Unity foils are transport units. Um, sea transport units, specifically. I don't even have the technology to make ships. I don't quite understand why I can't start with ships. Ships aren't that different from Chiron and Earth. Oh well. Um, this one, however, is a pretty crappy one. Uh, the Unity Foil is slow. This is the only unit in the game with the slow feature. The slow feature reduces your movement speed by one. That's it. That's all it does. This unity foil can also only carry one unit, rather than most foils carrying two or more. Eh. Oh. Also, I happen to have enough money now to do my social engineering. I can definitely use some more free units and police. I mean, it's free other than the upheaval cost of 40. So I'm going to go ahead and pay my 40 energy credits. You really don't need money in the beginning of the game for much of anything else. I'm going to go ahead and keep my foil there. I'm going to probably put the colony pod in it. We'll see what's down that way. I see a little blue square. I hope I'm not bordering somebody already. Um, when you're moving through fungus, as long as there's already a unit there, you don't take any penalties for moving through fungus. Otherwise, you have, I think it's a 50-50 shot of being able to move through it at all. And it takes up your entire turn to move. Unless there's a road in it. Oh. Okay, so this is my border. These are the border of my territory. Um, for land, it's pretty far out. For sea, as you can tell, it's not very far out. Uh, if you have sea bases, it's a one square beyond your fat cross, as it's referred to, the city radius. In general, you probably don't want to rely upon that for your borders for sea. It's much smaller than land. I'm going to go ahead and load that colony pod inside of this foil because it'll allow me to move faster at the very least. Because, holy crap, this is going to take me forever to move. Um, by the way, you probably don't want to investigate these pods with colony pods. Uh, you don't want to investigate it with any non-normal unit, so colony pods, 
Um, formers. Later on, you have a few other non-normal or non-combat units. In general, it's just not a good idea. They can randomly just disappear. Yeah, the game just trolls you. So, I'm now down to 8 power, so my odds have been reduced, but I am still have really good odds, so I'm going to go ahead and attack. You notice that I'm down to about 50% life? I should probably be heal start healing that unit soon. So what I'm going to do is have them go to the hive. And the hive is going to go exploring. And I'll just move it manually. It's also a really good way to get money right in the beginning of the game, or really for a good chunk of the game. If you're a planet hugger, one of the easiest ways for you to get money is to take a unit that can move through fungus quickly and just move it back and forth, triggering as many mine worms as possible and defeating them all for money. You think I'm joking. I'm not. That really is the best way of handling something. Um, there are pods in the water as well. Typically, you want to investigate those with transport units. That way, if it's something that you pick up, like, you know, you found a rover, or you found a battle ochre, or you found lots of things, the transport unit can pick it up. If you don't have a transport unit, like, for instance, if you have a sea combative unit, any of those random things that might happen get turned into mine, or turned into Isles of the Deep. So you have a much higher chance of seeing enemy units with Isles of the Deep, uh, without transport units, so... This is typically what I use foils for throughout the game. I'm intentionally not triggering it this turn, and you'll probably see why shortly. Um, so. Crap, I forgot that doesn't work in this game. Never mind. So, I'm gonna die. So, see what I mean by, I didn't have a prayer of getting Secrets of the Human Brain. Most likely, the university actually had both of the starting techs. Uh, the university's special bonus is they start with two starting techs. One of them, I should say. And chances are they started with both of them because it's only been ten turns. Um, they research fast, not that fast. So they've researched Secrets of the Human Brain. Nobody else is getting any bonuses for the Secrets of the Human Brain. There's a few other secrets throughout the game. They all have the same bonus. Luckily, my Unity Foil survived, because otherwise this would suck, and I would be landlocked for a very long time. Um, my Unity Foil is now hardened. I destroyed two units. You notice I did not get money. Um, you don't actually get money for units that you defensively kill. Kind of sucks. So what I want to do is get that scout patrol over to here so I can investigate that pod to make sure it's not, you know, fungus. Or, yeah, fungus is really the big one. Uh, there's a few other things. I'm probably going to building my city here. This will put my radius right up against the hive, but not actually overlapping at all, which is nice. Oh, See, this one gave me 25 energy credits. I can always use money. Hmm, I appear to be on a somewhat small island. That's going to be a problem. I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to wait a moment before building that city. Just in case. Okay, I need to go back to heal. Uh, it's been 14 minutes, so I've got a few more turns. Hooray! I finally have something to build! Oh dear, this is echoing, isn't it? There, now it won't echo. Sorry about that. Lady Deidre Sky, Biology of Planet. Sorry, I didn't realize that I actually had the game unmuted, so all of that was echoing. I'm so sorry. Um. From here, you notice that I have fewer options now? That's because the game trolls you. It randomly decides you can't research things. I don't understand why. Um, from here, now that I know my area a bit more, I know that I'm going to need some sea power. 
And I'm also going to need rec comments because I'm playing on uh, Transcend. And information networks are going to be useful for lots of other purposes. So really anything but industrial base at this point. I'm going to go ahead and go for social psych. I know that there's an AI that's already researched it. If I remember correctly, no, that's it for it. Never mind. Um, really any of these are pretty good of an industrial base. Let's not do that crap. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, see, one of the problems is that I already have Doctrine Loyalty, which Social Psych is a prerequisite of. Kind of like cheating. Um, mobility is nice because flexibility is where you get C units. Notice it's also a prereq for loyalty. Mm. Social Psych it is. Yeah, I'm really slow on research. If the university made their first tech in 2107, they probably didn't start with human, or they didn't start with both of the prerequisites for human brain. They probably only started with one of them. I'm going to go ahead and end this one at the end of this turn. Hopefully this isn't doom. Ah, it's an alien artifact. So alien artifacts are objects left behind by a previous civilization. Um, as we go through the plot, you'll start figuring out the previous civilization bit. Um, if we were actually playing with the expansion ones, you could potentially be playing as one of the ancient civilizations. Anyway, um, these artifacts can be used for one of two things, or one of three things, but really two of them are about the same. One, um, you can cash it in for a technology, which is awesome. Or two, you can cash it in for work toward a secret project or prototype. Um, Typically, it's not worth doing number two, but you do get a bunch of resources for it. Push comes to shove, it's not a terrible idea. Um, now that I know that that's an alien artifact and not, you know, energy resources or anything like that, I'm going to go ahead and build my second city here. Fecundity Tower. Yeah, because that sounds like a fun place to be. Um, to be honest, I don't need another scout patrol. I already have one right next to me that I'm probably just going to use. So I'm going to switch this to formers. And all I'm at it, I'm going to switch my main city to formers. Formers are awesome. Um, rule of thumb that I go with for land cities, especially in the beginning, you want two formers per city. Uh, coastal cities, at least not in the beginning, but later on, I end up doing one, co one land, one sea. Uh, for sea formers, I do two sea. Eventually, I have so many formers, I don't know what to do with them. I will, at that point, switch them to one formers per, especially for C. Always end up with too many C formers. And, yeah. So you should try to make sure that you have at least two formers per base, if you can. Uh, you notice I'm not really defending my bases very well. That's because I don't see any AIs. So the only thing I have to defend against are mindworms. And the best defense against a mindworm is a good offense. It's really actually the best defense for anything in the game. I'm going to go ahead and stop this here as is evidenced by me saving. Um, it is the year 2115, so we have gone through 15 turns. Enjoy the internet, and have a nice day!